Hey, welcome. Eagle Song Gardener here. I'm in the kitchen today at Ravencroft Garden, and we've spent the day digging Ella Campaign root, the Enula Hellenium. Um, we have some previous videos you can see of digging and washing and separating and dividing. So now we're in the kitchen. What are we going to do with that Ella Cam of Campaign? So here we've got pretty much the raw material that's been cut up into pieces, but this is preliminary washed. That's what it looks like. We use a lot of brushwork and breaking pieces open. So you can see, then we get down to this level of um, how to process the Ella campaign. So this beautiful top knot of the Ella campaign root. So we have here some different kinds. This is the top of the Ella campaign and it's, it's um, a big storage root. If you saw in the earlier videos, the, the size of the root, this root probably weighed 10 pounds altogether. And now we're breaking it down into pieces so we can process it further. We're going to make a tincture, an alicampane honey, and we're going to grind some alicampane when we make the tincture in a hand grinding, um, what do you call it? The hand grinder. <laughs> And then we're also going to um, cut some root for drying. So I just want to look at these roots. We've got this is the feeder roots. This is where a lot of the energy happens that um, the storage root holds energy for year after year growth of this long lived perennial. And I know this is a long lived perennial because this herb, the roots of this Ella campaign I have had for about 35 years by lifting, dividing, reseeding. The same plant has just continued to go on through time here at Ravencroft Garden. So these roots are what we're going to use to make the honey. They're very active, vital roots. They're only a couple years old. This is also a growing storage root. And this is the herb, this is the part of the root that's going to have more inulin in it. And that is a non-digestible fiber that is part of the root system of this plant. So we want this root for drying and also for making tincture where we can get that inulin into solution. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is chop this um, already pre-prepared root that came from this part of the plant, the, the top part. We're just going to start chopping it. Well, we don't actually have to chop it too much more. We're going to put it in a little plate and take it over to the grinder. This is going to become the, the tincture. So we have a very simple hand grinder we can use for this. And this is going to expose a lot more surface area of the root, which means we can get more of the inulin out. And this is one of the parts that we want in this tincture. We're just getting small pieces in a very simple um, process. I have enough here for about a pint of tincture. We'll be making the tincture with 100 proof vodka. It's easy for me to get 100 proof vodka. It's um, drinkable vodka. Okay, if you drink such things. So I really like this grinder. This is a simple um, non-electric mechanical grinder that allows me to simply create a much, a, a lot more surface area on the root. Okay, we will bring that back over here. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> All right, and I like to use the small mouth bottle for the tincture. Just keeps everything together. So we'll put this in here, and we're using the folk method of filling the jar once with the herb and because this is a, a good root I'm just not going to push it down 
not using the fairy pack method. And then we're just taking 100 proof vodka, whatever 100 proof you can get, and actually filling the jar the second time with the vodka, keeping out as much or filling it to the top so there's not too much air in the jar. Also a little bit of a stir here helps to bring out any air that might be in there right now. Get that vodka and the elecampane really integrated. All right, it's, it's pretty easy. So here you can see an elecampane uh, tincture that was made a week ago. This root was not ground, but you can see the enulin here, that starch that is settled to the bottom. So I just continue to shake it, turn it. We want the starch, we want the enulin to come out. It's a, a non-digestible fiber that actually ends up in the large intestine of the body, the large um, bowel, and it creates a habitat for microbes. Really important for the health of the gut and the health of the person. All right, so that's elecampane tincture by grinding the root. Here you can see this was sliced root. We didn't use the grinder. Here, let's get the light. Okay, and then this is root we made earlier today, and this is ground root. So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually create your medicines at home. I really like playing around mostly. All right, so now I'm going to take this big root and cut it up to dry. It's a, a nice storage root. I'm sure it has plenty of enulin. You can use elecampane dried in decoction where you simmer it in water, bring it to a boil and then simmer it. I'm going to cut it in about mm, quarter inch slices. I've quartered that nice fat root, good sized root. This is my wonder knife. Kiwi brand, stainless steel, best knife I've ever had. And I've had a lot of knives in my life. I've had this probably three or four years now, five years maybe. And it just keeps going strong. Really thin blade is why it works so well. Okay, so that's going to go into this basket. You know, an herbalist can never have too many baskets. So we'll be putting that in the basket. All right. Oh, here's another half. We'll finish it up. Again, root for decocting. You know, earlier, say in medieval time, they would use the elecampane root even in cooking. So you could add it to a soup or a stew. It's got a really pungent, strong taste. I, I like the taste quite a bit, but only in small bits. But if you were to put it, and we've done this before many times, in a soup or a stew, it actually adds a really interesting flavor, a little bit stronger than like celeriac. But bringing these foods and herbs into our diet on a regular basis is the objective of my work here at Ravencroft Garden. Well, there's a lot of objectives, but that's one thing I like to do. All right, so the the roots that are the feeder roots, we're going to slice these into, oh, about dime thickness, a small coin thickness. And these will go into honey to macerate. And once they're in the honey, they're good forever, really. I've had like 10-year-old, one thing about doing this for so long, you, you have the opportunity to find out through happy accidents how things happen if they're let to go beyond your thoughtful place. So I've seen 10-year-old elecampane honey 
that had macerated into an amazingly dark, rich, wondrous um, preparation, I guess I would call it, that the, the lozenges, these, these small di uh, dime-sized pieces of the root are, are lo become a lozenge that you can suck on because one of the reasons we want the elecampane in our apothecary, in our kitchen as it were, is to help with sore throats and coughs that are non-productive. The root actually will help to ease the congestion and mucus in the air pathways down to the lung and by sucking on these little lozenges over time, you get a very um, useful and practical solution to a sore throat or a non-productive cough. It will soothe the, the cough and constantly keeps going over the throat. If you've got it macerating in honey, then you can even count on the honey as part of the remedy. Antiseptic, antibiotic, it prevents the growth of bacteria and perhaps even viruses. An age-old herb, elecampane is listed in most of the old herbals from around the world. It's not just used in Western herbalism, it's also used in Chinese herbalism, Ayurveda. And so it's a plant, again, that is circumglobal in the northern hemisphere. Amazing, these plants. <laughs> and getting to know them is, is such a fun adventure. I, I really think that um, learning the herbs has been one of the most rewarding parts of my life because it's just expanded my understanding, not just of myself, but of the world that I live in. And that, to me, is what makes being on this planet so interesting, because so far we've not found another one anywhere that is similar. I rather like it here myself. So you see, we've got quite a few of these small dime-sized pieces going into just one pint jar. Even children will enjoy this a remedy. If they have a, a cough that is unrelenting and not productive, they will find the lozenge to be a fun way to take their medicine, if you will. Okay, so we have extra. So we're just going to throw this into our drying part. We'll put that there. And now we've got our roots in the jar. And we actually have an amazing honey that we're using today. This is uh, buckwheat honey made from the uh, polygonatum, the buckwheat plant that most people are finding as an invasive herb they don't like, but now they find there's resveratrol in the roots. And I have a, a neighbor who is a beekeeper, and so he supplies me with this amazing honey. It's got great flavor. And the, the richness of the honey goes really well with the strong, pungent taste of the elecampane. So we're just going to put that in there. And while that's settling down, again, we want to work it down in so it gets completely down to the bottom of the jar. And this is what it looks like after it's set for a week. Here we have elecampane honey. You can see it's the more liquid. All this is is the elecampane slices and the buckwheat honey. So every day I put it upside down, right side up, upside down, right side up, like two or three times a day. Whenever I go by the counter, I just turn it over. It's another fun way to be energetically engaged with the medicine getting to watch it, seeing what it's doing. And so um, this elecampane honey is probably one of the most fun things I ever made. 
I really, I really enjoy the flower of the plant, really enjoy the architecture of the plant in the garden. It's a very uh, powerful, strong uh, plant in the garden. So I know it's got this great storage root. It's a, it's a tonic herb. It's an herb that you can use small doses two or three times a day if you want to build strength in the lungs and increase the fire in the digestion if it's cold and sluggish. So that is just a little bit of Ella Campaign in the kitchen here at Ravencroft. For more information, come see us at eaglesong-gardener.com and see our classes, what we have going over at the Croft. See you there.